when you're on fire, when you're doing well, when you're trading well, like you feel like you could just do well, right? It's those day, those rare, rare days, bro, that they're going to stop you. It's those rare days, dude. That's that. And that's what you're going to create rules for to prevent those rare occasions. Welcome back everyone to be the trader today. I have a one-on-one -on -one session with a new trader. If you're interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one session, check out the link below in the description. And if you want a chance to win a free one-on-one -on -one session, comment below your Discord name and why you think you should win. And I'll be picking someone out at random. Let's get back to the show. I'm Milad, I'm based out of California. I'm originally from SoCal, but I'm currently in the Bay Area for work. I work at Google. Um, so I have a full-time job while I'm trading. Um, I've been trading for about a year now, right? In that year, probably taking every single course you can think of, read books, watch YouTube videos, even did a one-on-one -on -one, three month mentorship with a pro trader at SMB. So a cool. lot of really good feedback from my mentor and from others that I've kind of like interacted network with in terms of trading. So I absolutely love trading and I really believe I'm gonna become a seven figure trader relatively soon. Historical context in terms of trading. Um, I initially started out trading small cap, low float, in play names because I was initially following Warrior Trading, and those were the names that he was kind of trading, right? Um, that was honestly a blessing in disguise because little did I know my edges, my speed. I'm extremely fast in everything that I do. I think fast. I talk fast. I walk fast. Everything I do is quick. Um, so... I was trading in a simulator for a few months when I first started out and I was really profitable right off the gate. And my mentor was like, Hey, you should go live and see what happens. Create an offshore account, put 10 K in it. And I was profitable right at the gate. My mentor was really impressed. He said, he's never seen anybody trans transition from a sim to live the way I did. Nice. But, but my success was short lived. Similarly to a lot of traders starting out, I went through a bunch of ups and downs, right? Yes. Trying to figure out exactly like what type of trading I want to do, where my sweet spot is. So the main issue that I kind of ran into was I would run into a bunch of green days and then I would hit a big red day, right? Mm, and yep. I've heard you talk to Michael Semler and some other individuals and they all also said like, be careful on people who go on green streaks because they generally have a tendency to have a huge red day. And that's something that I would kind of like deal with as well. So when I would hit these red days, I would literally take weeks off, even like a month off of trading. Okay. And I would just be like, man, I, I kept having the itch to get back in, but it just like, it hurt so bad to get that yeah. red day, especially since I thought I was going to be big right off the mm, gate. Yep. I was going to hit seven figures before I knew mm. it. And I'm a very, very motivated, always working on myself type of person. Yeah, yeah I can tell. So it's like, I want to be great. I'm not I feel like I'm not working hard enough just watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to fast, half-ass anything, right? Yeah. So like the red days would really hurt me bad. But what I noticed was when I would come back into trading, I would immediately go onto a green street. I would get right back into it. There was no like feeling out process. I would get right back into it. So same size. Yes. Yeah, okay. same, same size, everything. And I was just like, well, actually when I would start back out, I would go with smaller size, like my first day, but I would just know I like, I felt it. It was just like so natural. Gotcha. Okay. So I noticed that there's opportunity cost by me taking time off between those days. And then secondly, my trading style is a very micro scalping style. So I'm not really, I don't need to look at macro trends as much and feel free to correct me if you think that's incorrect, but I don't need to re rely on macro trends as much because I'm in and out within seconds of my trades. So, so that's kind of like where historical context is where I'm at currently. Are I'm you playing thinking, small caps? Um, no. So okay. I trade higher cap, higher, um, larger float stocks because they're easy to borrow and I can short and long mm -hmm. really yep. quickly. Um, I might get into small caps later on, but they're not moving the same way they did last year. Yep. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not like really that crazy about them. Um, my strategy currently is as, as follows. I don't trade pre-market at the open. The first 10 to 15 minutes is where I make all my money. I micro scalp one minute candles. Essentially, I'm buying the millisecond that I'm noticing it's slowing down or I'll short the millisecond I notice it's slowing down off the top. And I'm basically just getting in and out really quick. I run into issues when there's a stock that's going straight up off the open or straight down off the open. If it's choppy, I make a lot of money. In terms of PL, I'm averaging one to 5K per day. 
Last Friday was my biggest green day. It's hit 6,500 in a day, and I was on cloud nine. Come Tuesday, I trade RBLX off to open, and I have my biggest red day, and I hit 10K in a loss. Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking beside myself. Excuse my French. So um, I was really, really upset. So I'm, I'm understanding that I'm running into these big red days. I need to mitigate these big red days. But at the same time, I need to understand when a stock is really, really strong or when it's really, really weak and let, let it run or just don't trade it at all. I want to take this time to say thank you to our sponsor, Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. So getting back to my strategy, I have micro scout for the first 10 to 15 minutes. Then at 6.45 a.m. or 9.45 a.m. Eastern time is when things have a tendency to slow down and mm -hmm. I'll look for backside short. That's my second really good trade. Okay. I look for stocks that are overextending and I, I kind of just, I basically time the top. So I'm going in with full size every single time. Super tight stop. If it goes against me a cent or two, I'm getting out and I'm trying again. I'm getting out and I'm trying again. Sometimes I get burned on the front side trying to time the top, but when I do hit the top, I revert it back to whenever it slows down or ideally V1. That's my second best trade. And then midday, I might not trade. I understand that I might have to hold trades, and I hate holding trades because I'm mm -hmm. so quick. I like to get in and out. And then I might trade at the close. But that's for the purpose of this call. I just need help putting together a strategy in place. Sure, a daily stop is 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 correct. I do need to adhere to one, but also maybe like some more rules if I need rules to how to mitigate these red, red days and how to be more proficient with my strategy and understanding when a stock is going to go green or when it's going to go red and it's just not my day to trade it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Also, my stock selection as well. I don't really have a I don't have a lot of variables or any like concrete details yeah. in terms of my stock selection at the open. I look for something that's a higher flow so it's easy to borrow, but also that has a tendency to be choppy at the open and have range so I can like make a quick buck. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cool. So, <clears throat> Mila, remind me though, how long have you been trading? Um, Almost a year. I mean, almost a year. with the time I've been taking off, if you really like add it up, it's probably been like six months. Six, so six, uh, oh, with the time, if you take that time out. And yeah, just put the time right trading six months. Okay, off. gotcha. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So a couple of things, you know, first off, congrats. That's awesome, man. Good job. You know, good shit. It seems like you kind of know what you're good at. And it seems yeah. like you know where you need to focus at, right? Yes. And you, you mentioned some things in there that really hit me um, saying like, okay, like, you know, he's only been training for about a year, but it sounds like he understands what he's talking about and what he's trying to do and what you need to accomplish. However, it also seems like you're not doing it, you know, just from the sound of it. 100%. Because, like, and, like right, Alex, I'm going to interrupt you really quick right there. I have a bad habit of coming back from my red days and turning them green. Mm, okay. Okay. Which also adds negative fuel to me not wanting to have a strict daily stop in place. Mm. So sorry, continue. Yeah. No. So that makes a lot of sense. I, you know, you're so new in your journey. Like I, all this is normal. Like all this is normal. And even traders who have been doing this for 10 plus years, 15, 20 years, it may happen less and less, but it still does occur. Right. Yeah. Especially when you're sizing up, if you're sizing up as you are working towards sizing up over time, it can tell that maybe that's impacting some of your decisions over time. Right. Oh. But, you know, I, obviously I can only share from my experiences and what I've heard from others and talked to others everything's going to work, you know, individually unique, but I'm just going to share you what I, my opinion is. Right. So like one of my main things that kind of sticks out to me is, as I mentioned, you know, your best time of the day is the first 15 minutes. Like, you know, that for a fact, and it sounded like you were so certain, like you would 
put all of your life savings on it and tell me like, you know, like I, I felt that. I, so, just, I know myself really well and I translate that into my trading and I don't think about anything else. So because of that, you also remind me of, you know that, but that, then then you're trading midday and then you're trading like, like the late, the, you know, my second best trade, like your first best trade to me should be the best trade that takes you to where you want to go, right? Yes. Like, it seems like that's your strategy. There's your strategy that you're good at can take you where you want to go. And I think you should just stop after 15, 20 minutes. Like I, ideally, right. If you trade the second setup, which is an overextension play that is going to be reversing. If you're going to trade that, it sounds like you get chopped up a lot in that. And it sounds like it happens because you, you just, how you mentioned, like you're chasing the, you're, you're looking for the top. Anytime anyone looks for the top, you're going to get chopped up, right? It's going to happen. And that chop up could influence your next trade, your next decision and the next move later, right? And you could just be making back what you lost and then oversized to make that back plus make some money. And so when it moves down, you're like, all right, like I'm doing well, but there's going to be a couple of a day or two where maybe that setup does not work well and you keep chopping, chopping. And then you're just chopping yourself up until you get too psyched. And then you oversize way too much and then you take another chop. But those chops are bigger chops now. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think you should really focus on the first, dude, just the first 15, 20 minutes. It's good that you know that. Because like for me, like I trade the first, I'm done by 1030 my time, which is 1130 Eastern time. So 9, 10, 11, that's, that's two hours. I'm, I trade the first two hours of the day. That's it. And I know if I trade pre-market, bro, I'm taking losses. I, for the most part, like a 90% sure I'm going to take a loss, yeah. even if I'm right, going to take a loss. And then if I trade after 10, 30, 11, my time, which is 11, 30, 12 market time, I, I, it's chop. Like my history is just chop. And, and if anything, I'm taking mental losses yes. and that's impacts my next day, my next trade, everything it impacts so much. So I think having a rule set in place for yourself around like the first, and you can be a little leeway just say, you know, if I don't, here's my example. For me, I'm like, if I don't have a stock I'm already watching, mm. but I'm already eyeing, they already have a plan set for, like I'm waiting for certain things to happen, by 10.30, then I can't look for any, I, I can't go searching after 10.30. But if I'm eyeing something that hasn't triggered yet and it's at 10.30 now, I'm like, oh, it hasn't triggered. I can still sit there until 11 and until it triggers because it's already set up and had plenty of time for me. And I'm not just getting emotional. I know it's still in my window. But after 11, if it didn't trigger yet, I'm done. I just got to get off. Because, because if, I, if I do take it, I know the odds are really low that I'm going to win. And it's just really low. And so you know that, it sounds like. You know your odds. You know, granted, you've only been trading for so a small amount of time. I'm, I'm taking the information you're giving me as facts. I'm taking the information you're giving me as you know for a fact your strategy and you are good at it and you know it. And yep. so- because of that, like that's that what I that's what I would do, and then you'll find out if you're right. Because after every after about a month or two, or even just a month of just the first thirty minutes, first thirty minutes, and that's it, and cut yourself off and go, you'll see some results, whether it's positive or negative. Then you'll be like, okay, you know, I need to keep doing this, or I need to adjust justice. Maybe I need to give myself the first hour because you know maybe I was wrong, you know. So something like that. So that's the first thing that kind of pops out uh, from what you're saying. And the max loss, I think you definitely. You need that, man. So that way, that way you don't lose more than you make. Like it, it's just so important, right? Like it's so simple, but like those days that you are go, 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 go. And then like you're, you're, you're doing great. And then you have a big loss. I'm willing to bet it wasn't one like trade that made you that big loss day. It was probably yeah. a lot of trades totally. or like one or two or three. And the third one was the big one. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking it, hundreds of trades per day. Okay. So exactly. So like, I'm, I'm assuming that's exactly what's happening. And yeah. your, your head, your head, your mental is just getting like, just itched away, itched away, itched yeah. away, itched away, like constantly to where it starts to get frustrating and aggravating. And then that big loss is there. And so yeah. I think you need a rule like, like I, the kind of rule I would make, like, for example, I don't trade like you at all. I don't know shit about scalping yeah. other than I can do it once in a blue moon, but I'm not a scalper. Like I'm nowhere near that. But, I, but I, what if I was dealing with an issue similar to this, not only do I have, I have a max loss rule, right? I don't want to lose more than three R in a day period. Like if I lose more than three R in a day, 
then I need to take a break because so I can make three R, three R in one day. Excuse me. What's an R? Like how much R is relative per? Yeah, the relative risk that you're going to risk per okay. trade. So like uh-huh. if if your R is ten dollars every trade, right? A thousand every trade. Like that's your R, right? So I don't want to lose more than three R in one day because if I'm right. I'm going to make three R, right? Yeah. So I at least want to be able to make back a max loss day, period, okay. right? And if you're trading every single day for years, like oh, over time, like you're going to do great. So like, that's my personal rule. Now, if I was also, I have another rule that kind of can help, but you know, mine is if I like kind of revenge trade, that's like, that's like, because a weakness oh. of mine, right? Oh. And so the max loss rule prevents me from really destroying myself. But another rule is if I trade a ticker and I take a loss on it, I have to give myself, if, as long as I take a full R loss on it, I have to, I can give myself five, I can give, sorry, 15 minutes before I reattack it. Now, 15 minutes is a long time for you maybe, but for me, it's, it's nothing. So like 15 minutes, so that way I can give myself time to reset, look at it again, and before I pull another trigger. And if I get, and if I'm wrong twice on the same ticker, I am done for that ticker for the day, because I have found that it's one ticker for me over time that destroys a good day. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know that's my weakness. So I have rules around that. So like, you should think about, you know, what could help you, you know, thinking out loud, like just hearing what I'm saying, what do you think can help you, you know, create what kind of rule that you can create that can help you like prevent yourself from going down that path. For sure. For sure. I, that's really helpful. I appreciate that. Um, I, I think what I'm thinking about is having a max daily stop, but then having like micro rules in place for my my micro scalps and then my backside shorts. So the rule I kind of had right now is a mental rule. If I'm profitable at the open, I'll take my backside shorts, but if I lose 50% of my green, I'll get out for the day. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's kind of like what I'm doing right now, but I, I, I don't know if I should, I don't want to make it too strict, like having a three strike rule on my micro scalps, because I feel like the, the flexibility I have in my trading suits, my personality, where I don't have to come at the market at this time, do all my prep work and do this helps me be fluid and helps me enjoy trading, which translates into me being profitable right now. I feel like if I put a lot of rules in place. It'll prevent me from having that fluidity and that enjoyability. So why don't trading. you have a rule that's like, you have like so you agree you need a max loss rule for sure okay so so why don't you have a max loss rule and then i'm assuming like you're going to be able to know when you hit a third of that max loss you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so yeah, like yeah. you can have that kind of a rule like when i get halfway to my max loss i have to do x whatever right. x is downsize don't trade whatever it is yep. you know make that rule but like or a third to the you know the max loss Cause then yeah. that way, cause your goal is to prevent those days, right? Like when you're on fire, when you're doing well, when you're trading well, like you feel like you could just do well, right? It's those days, those rare, rare days, bro, that, that they're going to stop you. It's those rare days, dude. That's that. And that's what you're going to create rules for to prevent those rare occasions. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm struggling. So if you see me typing, I'm just jotting down notes. Um, that's all good. So, yeah. So that's where I'm struggling is like when I ha- when I start having the red days, like how do I know it's going to be a red day until I just get out? So I guess, yes, having a max loss and I guess like knowing exactly how do I put the number on the max loss and is it flexible in terms of how my week's going or how my month's mm. been going, et cetera. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts? I think it should be flexible. I don't think it should be a static number. Um, Explain, like how, what would make you comfortable? Like, what do you mean? Okay. So I guess just off the top of my head. So like the example I was just um, going at before, if I'm green off the open and I'll put 50% um, for my max loss risk for my backside short, what if like I'm, I have a max loss on Monday, let's just say it's 2K for the day. Yep. And I adhere to that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I'm green for the whole week, then my stop changes to be 50% of what I'm at for the week. Your max loss? My max loss for the day. Will be, so you'll up, be 50% of what you're up for the week. If I'm trading on Thursday that, and I'm up like 5K, I'm risking yeah. 2500 on the day. Okay. I think that's that's going to be a, if you can, 
So some people, okay, everyone's unique, right? Everyone's different. Yeah. Like some people won't be able to stomach losing half if, of a great week. I can week. stomach anything. Okay. So oh, yeah. if, 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 if that anything. doesn't bother you and you can still trade level head it, right? Yeah. And take a max loss that's bigger than normal because you're up, right? Yep then good. Then, then that's fine. Like, I mean, that's your rule. Like for me, I wouldn't do that. Like for me, that wouldn't work for me. Like I, I like to keep it static. It just helps me. And as I size up every week or every, depending on what I'm doing in that week, because yeah. some weeks, if I'm on fire, I'm going to size up a little bit. Right. And so I might, I'm increasing my three R max as well. Like everything increases and then I decrease it altogether, you know? So like, that's how I do it. But like how you do it is up to you. And, and that's uh that's not a bad idea. So, I mean, if you can handle that, then all power to you. I mean, there's days where like you're going to be on fire and you might be up, I don't know, 10 R in one day. And if that's the case, you know, I may personally, I may be like, you know what, you know, tomorrow this trade is really good. I may risk more than I normally do on a previous trade because I'm up 10 R in one day. Like, uh, you know, this is a good week so far. Let me at least push, you know, sometimes you can push like, but that's just, you know, for people who are trying to get consistent, people who are trying to work on that, you know, I definitely wouldn't say that, but like at the same time, if you feel like you can stomach it, you know, you can slowly push, but just don't risk more than what you can lose. Right. Like that's important. Got it. Awesome. I, I think it's a very basic concept of having a daily stop in place, but I think like the subset of it, like the specificity of it is really helpful. So next thing I'll talk about is from green to red days. Here's kind of like the mental. Let me ask like, you something before you get into yeah, that. Please. Yep. You also mentioned something around the fact of, I tend to do really well when things are choppy, but I tend to do not so well when things just go and don't stop, right? right? They don't really reverse. It's either just a bloodbath day or it's a high rocket day. So yeah. I think what could help you identify those type of moves yep. is looking at the big picture. Like I know you don't look at the big picture uh, for the most part, yeah. but I think it's super simple to do. You know, all you would have to do is look at the like the four hour the one hour maybe the daily and that's it can you give and, an example right now can we look at rblx on tuesday okay one second one okay, second cool. go ahead and tell me what you're going to say while i pull up my no, no that's all i was going to say i was just going to say because right. um I, I wanted you to come in and walk me through your your thought process on how you would look at that all right one second where are you from by the way um i'm persian Oh, cool, cool. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, where are you at, though? Like, where are you oh, at? I'm, a, I'm in California. I'm in the Bay Area. California? Cool, man. Uh, let's see. RBLX? Yep. Tuesday. Let's see if we can pull this up. All right. One second. Let's go ahead. You said Tuesday? Which was what day was that? Um, the fifth, I think. Right here. So on this big day. Okay. So on this day right here. Yeah. If you go to the open. Oh, are you looking at a daily chart? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll go to the open. Hold on one yeah. second. Um, this is Tuesday the fifth. Yep. You want me to zoom in more? This is um, the open. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So that just rocketed. Just, yeah. You're looking at it on a 10 minute chart and then in the hindsight, it's like, Hey dude, this thing just ripped up. Why are you even trying to short But yeah. on a one minute? Like while it's moving. Yeah. Here's a one minute right here. Yes. The candles were going up and oh, down wrong quite day, a wrong bit. Day. So it looked like it was running into some, you know, resistance at the top and it would go back and then would go right back up, go back. right back. So I was just getting chopped up trying to short because because look, yes, it looks like it went straight up, but it easily could have flushed right back down to the open at any time during the open. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Yes, I do know what you're trying to say. Yes. Yeah. So this is the day in question, right? And the yeah. one minute, it does look a little choppy, you know? Yeah. But, you know, what I, what, I, what I would always do is I'll look at the daily chart before I even trade in it. Yes. And I would be drawing out this very eye-opening level first i'll draw on the daily be like okay that's important key support becomes resistance so many times i go to the four hour still see it it looks amazing there and then you know and you could clearly see now like what i would see just personally was be like okay well this is a breakout day you know so like because it's a breakout day there's gonna be there's potential here that it could really run 
and it did, you know, like, and it did run and, and, you know, that's probably could have prevented you from, you know, maybe still attack it, you know, that's up to you, but like maybe it come, attack it with the awareness hundred percent that, Hey, this is a breakout. And if, since this is a breakout, it could, you know, you know, breakouts, breakouts can really run if they get momentum. Yeah. So, you know, maybe wait for it to, you know, do something else. But um, that's what I mean by looking at the big picture, because like the big picture can help prevent you from trading that, right? Like if you, and if you look at the big picture on other stocks, there's going to be tons. There's a lot more that aren't breaking out that are in between ranges, the low and the high. And you just play with those then, you know, since that's like kind of your edge and it's already in a channel in the big picture. So then you just got to play the channel in the smaller picture. So at least you have something on your side. That's super helpful. So Alex, essentially, you're just basically saying setting levels on a higher time frame prior to micro scalping. I would say like, just look at the big picture constant, like every time before you, I, I personally think the big picture is important. And I think it's important to see and I draw your key levels, right? Your key levels so that way you can have somewhat of a guideline. And it's because when you're, when you're, when you're scalping, like, I mean, especially the way you're doing it, like when I'm trading, I, I'll use a one minute, but five minute most of the time. But when I'm in the one minute trying to get an entry there, you, it's easy where you can like kind of forget the big picture, like, cause you're just like lost. So, yeah. you know, just yeah. make sure you, but those lines out there really help. Cause then you're like, oh shit, we're getting towards a line. What is that line? Maybe I forgot zoom out and you're like, oh, that's what that is. So exactly. I think that'd be helpful. And especially when it broke out with volume as well, which is more of an indicator of like the move is going to be strong for the day. Right, right. It's a better, it's a, it's definitely an indication that I don't want to short right now. Gotcha. Got it. That's super helpful, Alex. So big, so bigger picture is just looking at a higher time frame chart, not necessarily looking at news or anything like that. I personally, so I don't, I don't look at news personally, okay. right? I'm looking at the big picture every single time. And I'm not saying that news isn't helpful or not, but just for me and how I trade, I don't really look at the news. Like I am looking at like fed news just to see what's going to be announced. Yeah. But, and that may be in my awareness to be like, okay, I may trade a little different today because of X, Y, and Z, but I'm not, I'm not, I am personally never, I'm just not looking up news articles. Every time I look at the stock, I just don't, I just don't yeah. personally, I look at the chart. I trade off the chart and that's how I trade. Got it. Got it. Super helpful. Thanks, yeah. man. Um, yeah, yeah, no worries. So I think at its core, that was kind of like the biggest thing. I think we kind of like, I just needed someone like to bake into my brain that, hey, you need to have a daily stop. This is kind of like really, really important. It's very obvious. So I'm hoping that helps mitigate. I'm hoping um, looking at the bigger picture also helps mitigate my red days as well. Um, so I'll definitely incorporate what you taught me as well. So these were kind of like the main things that I wanted to chat about today. Yeah, man. Hey, I think it's awesome that you said something and that is that you are taking time off when you take a big loss Yep. that you took like months sometimes. And like most people can't even, most people can't even take a day off. Right. And so like, I think, and then you said something that was interesting. You come back and you usually just come back and you do well. And I think it's because you take that break. Right. And then you mentioned something that I think is a danger is you said, you know, it makes me think maybe I shouldn't take that time off because of the opportunity cost. Totally. And I'm thinking in question, the opportunity cost could be if you did stay and you took more losses, like you're actually, you're, you're, you're going to cost yourself so much more money. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's what's more likely going to happen to a lot. Of, that's what happens to a ton of traders. Like they take a big loss and then they may take a day off and then they come back and they just take another loss or just chop, chop, chop frustration and loss. Yes. So like, you know, I could argue that it, it could be good that you take that time off. So it could be. And I think there's only one way to find out is by me getting back. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. Yeah. I think what you're saying is more of a psychological thing. People are running into psychological issues in terms of handling the big red lo loss. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to mitigate that. I, I, and I think that's something that we need to all improve on as a trader. Is Absolutely. When we get hit and punched in the face, we got to be like, OK, I got punched today, but I know over time my strategy works. I need to be, give, to be able to get back in the ring, stick to the game plan and win the fight. So um, we'll see. We'll see if like the, the time I take off is actually good or if I can jump back in there, be right profitable again. I guess right. we'll see and I'll let you know for sure.